How does my sat-nav know where I am? A cheap, off-the-peg sat-nav makes you a better navigator than anyone in the world 50 years ago. It can tell you exactly where you are, which was a subject of uncertainty for many thousands of years. But how? Now, although there are rival systems in various stages of development, including the European Galileo project, all modern sat-nav systems rely on the global positioning system known as Navstar to tell them where they are. Navstar is a network of 24 satellites that orbit the Earth at altitudes of around 11,500 miles, and which have been organized and paid for, thank you, by the US military. Originally, Navstar was a top secret Cold War project designed to guide intercontinental ballistic missiles accurately onto targets in the Warsaw Pact countries, rather than onto a nearby Chinese embassy. But as the Cold War ended and the world defrosted, so the decision was taken to open up Navstar to civilians. The US military stopped encrypting the signals sent by these satellites so that anybody could read them. And although the early GPS receivers were both bulky and expensive, size and cost have fallen almost exponentially. These days you'll find GPS receivers inside mobile phones and even some expensive watches, enabling you to tell the time and look like a knob. GPS itself works actually very simply. Assuming you've got someone to launch and maintain the network of orbiting satellites it relies on, then actually working out where you are is pretty easy, sort of. The secret is one of time. Each GPS satellite contains a very accurate clock, which continually broadcasts both its exact time and also its location, known as the ephemeris data. The receiver works out how far it is from the satellite by comparing the message it receives to its own clock and then calculating the distance according to how long it's taken the signal to arrive, travelling at the speed of light. With one satellite, this information is actually pretty useless. The receiver just knows how far it is from the signal. But with two satellites, the distance radii should intersect to give a fix, with more satellites increasing the accuracy further. The minimum number of satellites needed for acceptable accuracy is four, but there should be a minimum of 10 above each part of the world at any time. What the system is doing is really just a very long-range version of a navigator of old taking fixes from, say, uh, a church steeple, a lighthouse and a hilltop, and then drawing some triangles on a map. How does the receiver know what time it is to the same accuracy as the atomic clocks carried by the satellites? Well, by a very clever fudge. Rather than having a super-accurate clock on board, the receiver can effectively reverse the equation it uses to plot position to work out what the time is based on the distances from different satellites. Like position, the more satellites it can see, the more accurate its time will be. Originally, the civilian signal from the satellites was deliberately degraded to reduce accuracy. Early GPS receivers could only tell you where you were to the nearest 100 meters, which made it tricky to use them for precise navigation. But in 2000, this selective availability, as it was called, was switched off, meaning that GPS is now accurate to about 15 meters for all of us. The US military can still turn GPS off or scramble it at will. So if your sat-nav suddenly packs up, it's possible that some form of covert black op is being conducted in your vicinity. Of course, modern navigation devices often need better accuracy than pure GPS can give them, like knowing which side of a motorway you're driving down, which is why they feature a load of other sensors, compasses, uh, accelerometers to measure velocity, and in the case of mobile phones, the ability to do some triangulation of local phone masts. Car navigation systems will also presume they are travelling on a road and will move their position to correspond if the reading is slightly out. But of course, just because you and your sat-nav know where you are, that doesn't mean you have any clue where you're going. A point made every time a 44-ton truck comes up your driveway because that's what the sat-nav told the driver to do. It is clever but it isn't a substitute for intelligence. Now, we think we're terribly clever. We have orbiting satellites and we have talking maps inside a box, but the big science question of the future is, will we ever be able to build the Starship Enterprise? Well, the answer is in this Sci Guide.
So to increase the frictional force of these foam books, overleaf in every page all the way through the foam book. The head squeeze team have done their job absolutely perfectly.